beautiful Wednesday evening here on the island of Nevis and I don't know how many people are tuned into the show because it seems like half of Nevis is in Charlestown at the moment for our annual Christmas tree lighting. I couldn't be there and I apologize profusely to the organizers but you know that on Wednesday nights once I'm on island I try to be here on Vaughn Radio with you and to be on here on the mark. This is Straight Talk Across the Narrows, and certainly I hope that the events in Charlestown go well. I know they do a fantastic job each year, and again, I regret not being there. It is Wednesday. Then we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the 12th of December, is Election Day here on the island of Nevis. I would have uh, given the necessary nod after discussions with the Honorable Prime Minister to his Excellency the Governor General, that the Nevis Island Assembly be dissolved as of the 25th of November, paving the way for nominations on the 5th of December, which was just Monday, gone, and elections on the 12th. So it's been a short, sharp campaign. I would want to go on record as congratulating, uh, go on record, I'm sorry, to congratulate the candidates who were nominated. There were five candidates nominated for the NRP, two candidates, I'm told, nominated for the MRM, and five candidates nominated for the Concerned Citizens Movement. The blue team would have nominated myself as the leader and uh, the candidate for Nevis II. The uh, Honorable Eric Evelyn as the incumbent candidate for number three. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers as the incumbent candidate for number four. The Honorable Spencer Brand as the incumbent candidate for number one, and a brand new candidate in the Honorable Latoya Jones, who is running for the first time, a young woman from Bansgut, who has stepped up, put her hand up to serve, and she will be contesting number five, St. Thomas's. And I believe that will be a race to watch because everybody I think that we are talking to is saying that the other races are pretty much determined. This race in St. Thomas's will be the race to watch. And for the first time in history, St. Thomas's is now a battleground seat. That has never happened before because in every previous election, it has been a foregone conclusion in the minds of some that St. Thomas's could not be won by the CCM. And indeed, the NRP has over the years taken the people of St. Thomas's for granted. That, ladies and gentlemen, is no more. It is time now for us to contest and contend with every single seat on the island of Nevis. And I am so happy that we have a candidate, the caliber of Miss Jones, who has put her hand up and stepped forward to serve. Now, I would invite the prayers of all of us for her. She has suffered a debilitating uh, condition which has left her unable to walk, unable to move around. She has experienced considerable pain. And I believe that it has been a portrait in courage when I saw her being lifted out of a motor vehicle on nomination day and being carried upstairs by her colleagues, the Honorable Eric Evil and the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, and to be standing on crutches in order to be nominated. That to me shows the grit and determination that the people of St. Thomas's need and want. It shows the grit and determination of an individual who is committed to the task at hand, committed to serving. And I wish you, Latoya Jones, a speedy recovery, and I invite you, the public, to pray for her recovery. She's a young person who has stepped up in difficult circumstances, in a seat that some say is impossible, but she's making the impossible possible. And so we look forward definitely to Monday, the 12th of December, that day that the Lord would have made. And we trust and hope that he takes us safely to that day. And we invite and encourage our people to go out in their numbers and to vote and to vote overwhelmingly for the concerned citizens movement. Now, what is at stake in this election? We hear a lot of chatter and we understand that in a democracy, there is a marketplace, if you will, of ideas. And that different people will have different views as to the best approach for the island. And that is to be welcomed. There's nothing wrong with that. We expect the cut and thrust of debate, the discussion of ideas, and we expect, of course, for parties to have their perspectives. Latoya Jones, for example, has become the first candidate in the history of Nevis, so far as I'm aware, that has laid out a comprehensive plan, a mini-manifesto, if you will, for the people of St. Thomas's. 
It has never happened before. Perhaps because the NRP never thought that they needed to lay out anything for St. Thomas's. They took it for granted. Well, this time around, we have a comprehensive plan that has been laid out by her. And this is her plan for her constituency and what her representation will bring to the people of St. Thomas's. Just at 6 p.m. this evening, we would have released electronically our manifesto for the next five years, which showcases our achievements over the past term and our plans and programs for the next five years. We, so far, are the only political party that has released a manifesto to the people of Nevis. And one expects that because one expects the CCM to lead. We have decided that we will not print a manifesto because, of course, we are concerned about the environment. And so what we've done is put it in a form that people can get it on their cell phones, get it on their computers, get it on social media. And we have disseminated it as widely as we can via all of our social media platforms. And so if you're interested in a copy of that manifesto, please reach out. Let us know. We will get you a copy electronically. Reach out to the social media platforms, CCM, uh, Concerned Citizens Movement Facebook page, uh, or our Twitter feed, or our, our what else do we have, Instagram feed, or certainly ccmnevis.com, our website. We have gone out and we have produced, we think, a document. We have used graphics to make it interesting to read so that it is not overly cumbersome or overly wordy, but we have encapsulated in that a short sharp, attractive set of ideas which we feel will encourage our people to go out and to vote, to continue the progress that we have had. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been having conversations across the length and breadth of Nevis. We have been engaging with persons in their homes via telephone, via social media. We have been engaging in every way that we can with our public meetings. Indeed, we resume our public meetings tomorrow night, Thursday, and then we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the grand finale at Caribbean Cove. And so we're inviting one and all to come to these meetings. The meetings are live and lively. People are really enjoying and the excitement is there. CCM always has an exciting campaign. But beyond the excitement, we are discussing some very serious issues. We are discussing some real issues. And we are engaging with the public in a substantive way about the future of this island. Many people say they don't want to hear anything about the COVID-19 pandemic. It is easy to say. But for those of us who are asked to manage this island during a time of crisis, during an unprecedented period in our history, when the island of Nevis was confronted with the first global pandemic in 100 years. What that means is that no other premier in the history of Nevis has had to deal with a calamity such as COVID-19. Now, because the island is standing, because we kept deaths and hospitalizations and infections per capita to a minimum, that our vaccination rates are among the highest in the region, some say, ah, it wasn't that big a deal. But I can assure you, in the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic, when we knew not what to expect, when on our television screens we saw refrigerated trucks parked, we are told with bodies on the streets of New York, in Italy, we saw lockdowns even today continue in places like China. I say, thank God, thank God, that in his wisdom, he had in place in Nevis leadership chosen by him, and the people to govern and guide our island in a time such as this. It was a difficult time, but the fact that we are here today standing in December of 2022, I believe is testament to what we were able to achieve during that most difficult of times. And so we would have got into office and the kind people of Nevis would have invested their trust and confidence in me as the leader but also in the other members of the team. And we won four out of five seats on the 18th of December, 2017. We won number one, St. Paul's. We won number two, St. John's. Number three, St. George. And number four, St. James. We fell short in number five, St. Thomas's. 
But we hope to correct that in this election. And so we entered into government. We spent some time consolidating, but we felt that 2019 going into 2020 was a breakout year for the island of Nevis. All the stars were aligned. Everything looked good. Hotels were reporting record bookings. The Four Seasons had just reopened after a massive 65 million US dollar renovation. There was a buoyancy in the island, and we felt it. And we felt that we were on the cusp of doing some great things. We had some big plans infrastructurally. And then March of 2020 came, and COVID hit, and the country was shut down. The hotel sector was shut down, and the economy went off the cliff. In fact, I think it is interesting that in April of 2019, we recorded the highest number of jobs in the history of Nevis. By April of 2020, we had lost some nigh 1,400 of those jobs. And even now, we have not fully recovered. But praise be to God, we are recovering. And we have accomplished much. This morning, I spoke to the Four Seasons, and they have indicated that they've hired 113 additional workers for the festive season. And they hope, based on the performance of that workers and based on their own bookings into the new year, to keep as many of those new hires as they can. So for those of you who have had that opportunity, I urge you, hold on to your job, perform well, because this may be the start of a great career for you in hospitality. MSR Media, the movie company that we brought here in the height of the COVID pandemic, they now tell us that they employ 95 persons. And in fact, just tonight, I had a conversation, and I'm so happy to hear that the wages that they're paying are multiple times higher than wages being paid elsewhere. Some workers, they're getting as high as six and seven hundred US dollars per week, per week. And I think that those good paying jobs that have come to the island is something that we ought to be proud of. We have expanded our financial services sector, including our offering of international banks. We now have not one, but two international banks operating in St. Thomas's Parish. And we expect that over time, we will get more in a properly regulated and controlled environment. We have continued to promote agriculture, food security. No government in the history of this island has done more for agriculture. We have provided during the pandemic free seeds, free seedlings, free fertilizer, free land preparation, free fencing, free water. We have given to our animal farmers free feed for their livestock. We've given to our fisher folk free fish pot wire and discounted prices on additional rolls of fish pot wire. We have stood with our farmers and the Honorable Alexis Jeffers as Minister of Agriculture did something unprecedented. He was able to provide five free shade houses to existing farmers. And we are told that some of those are already producing food. Those of us who are promoting more technology in agriculture would appreciate the significance of five shade houses valued at $60,000 each given gratis to our farmers. We did that because we said we needed to double down in terms of food security. We could no longer be held hostage if the port of Miami were to close and containers couldn't come. And to support our farmers, we built a Larinson Parry storage facility at Prospect, which now allows farmers to bring their produce, allows us to store it, extend the shelf life, and therefore allow the farmers more flexibility in terms of their marketing efforts. We have explored markets overseas for some of our produce. In fact, we had good meetings when we were in the U.S. Virgin Islands recently on that very matter. But we haven't stopped there. We have converted the farm at Cades Bay, where the Taiwanese mission used to be, into a leisure farm that now we will use for tourists as well as for production. I have done the tour. I encourage you, if you haven't done it, to try it. Wonderful experience. We have created a fruit orchard at Indian Castle, 35 acres, where we have planted almost 5,000 coconut palms. Everybody now is drinking coconut water. That is the big thing, not just here, but around the world. 
But we know that the coconut palms in Nevis, all pinnies and those areas which were, which were so prevalent during my youth that they've been destroyed by a disease called lethal yellowing. Well, we have not stood by. We are now replanting coconut palms. And having planted nigh 5,000, we are now creating an additional clearance of some 35 or 40 acres more to plant more food for our people to eat, food to sustain our people, food that we can earn from, food that we can ultimately export. And you compare that to the lack of vision on the other side. We are on the very same lands. They opted to grow cotton instead of food. And when we got in, we said, people can't eat cotton. We need to feed our people. And that is why we took the decision that we have taken. And I am happy with the direction in which we are headed in agriculture. We have not stopped there. We know that Nevis is almost self-sufficient now in egg production. But we import millions of dollars worth of chicken meat, chicken parts, if you're like me, I like chicken back and neck, I like chicken wings. Those who like breast and thighs and drumsticks, well, that's a matter for them. But chicken and chicken parts, whole chicken and chicken parts, we import millions, in fact, tens of millions of dollars worth of chicken each year. And this government, again under the leadership of the Honorable Alexis Jeffers in agriculture, we have a vision to create a broiler industry. That is, we feel that we should be able to grow our own chickens here and have the necessary facility to process our own chicken. Fresh chicken without the hormones and all the other uh, dangerous substances that we understand are injected into them elsewhere. Natural chicken. You know, in fact, I was at a restaurant recently in the U.S. and on the menu they had chicken. I can't remember the price, but let me just use for illustration, $15. And then they had something called free-range chicken which was double the price. And I reflected and I said, you know, when I was a boy down Hanley's Road, we used to run chicken until they fell down from exhaustion. And that would be dinner. And everybody said that that was poor people food. We used to call it yard fowl. But see it now on menus around the world as free range chicken. More expensive than the usual chicken. That's just the nature of life. And so we are saying that we can produce a product locally which is healthier, a product that our small farmers, because see the model that we want to use. We are going to provide land. In fact, we are already under contract to purchase about 60 acres of land that will be at the foot of Hanley's Road. And that land going over to the sort of Hickman's area, that land we hope to subdivide and make available to farmers for the poultry industry. Small farmers will be encouraged to grow their chickens and then bring them to a central processing facility that will be government managed, just like the abattoir is now. And that facility is what we hope to use to then process, package, and make chicken available, all of Nevis, all of St. Kitts, and we hope that we can send chicken to our neighbors as well because there's no chicken poultry broiler industry that we currently see in the neighboring islands. None in St. Martin that we're aware of, none in Antigua, none in Seba, Stacia, any of those islands. And so we feel that there is a huge opportunity here and we're stepping up to the plate in a significant way. Again, looking forward, look into diversified economy, look into food security, and look into create jobs for our people and opportunity for investment for those who are so minded. Let me move on to healthcare. We have seen a quiet revolution in healthcare in Nevis. The opposition focuses on the fact that our hospital is not yet finished. And that is okay. That is okay. They, however, have ignored the fact of the strides that we would have made. In that very hospital that is not yet finished, which they seem to think it's building a full cube somewhere, that hospital is two and a half times the size of the existing Alexandra Hospital. We have now put in the windows. We are now starting the interior work. The windows had to be in in order to accommodate that. 
We have painted the exterior so that persons can have a sense of how this structure is going to look aesthetically. And we are at work. We lost time due to COVID. We lost time due to some redesign issues, but we are at work. And I have said to the contractors and to the ministry, we want to be able to deliver that project in 2023. That project will take healthcare Nevis to the next level. It's an investment for the next 40 years at least in terms of healthcare. But while that is happening, there has been absolutely no devaluation or diminution in the quality of healthcare that has been made available to our people. I was at the hospital a few days ago and I marveled that we have there a garage facility. And in that garage facility, two brand new ambulances. The people of Nevis remember the days when we got used ambulances sent to us. Two brand new purpose-built ambulances are there, quiet at the same time. One for the assistance of Social Security and the other with our own resources. And that is the type of investment that we have been making. We had, I believe, it was either two or three ventilators at the hospital. Over COVID, we recognized we had to invest. We now have over 10 available, saving lives. We could not do PCR testing. We went out and through again our engagements, we now have PCR testing available at the Alexandra Hospital. We have improved our diagnostic capabilities. We now have a 128 slice brand new Philips CT scan machine costing over a million US dollars. That was acquired through partnership with the Drahi Foundation and we continue to say thank you to Mr. Drahi and his team. That will take our ability to diagnose illnesses to the next level on the island of Nevis. There's no such machine on St. Kitts. There's no such machine anywhere in the sub-region except we are told in Grenada. That is a monumental step forward for the island of Nevis and for the people of Nevis. We have hired nurses from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, from Dominica, from the Philippines. But to deal with the shortage of nurses, we recognized that we had to hire nurses from outside Nevis. We had to ask some of our retired nurses to come back and assist us. But we also recognized that we had to encourage and incentivize young people to get into nursing. And so we have provided support, financial support, for young people who are studying nursing at CFBC and provided guaranteed employment to them when they're done that they can come back to us and work at the hospital. It is no longer the case as it used to be that you simply went in and apprenticed and became a nurse. The requirements now are that they have to get that degree at CFBC or some other institution. And we have been supportive of that. We have not one but two nurses currently in Jamaica being supported by the government financially who are doing master's degrees in nursing. This is a government that has demonstrated its commitment. We have at the health centers provided generators because when power outages occurred, we didn't want to lose medication or to have any disruption. We are working and have installed a health information system which as it gets up to speed will be able to allow us to manage our information in a better way at our local hospital and our health centers. We have been engaged in recruiting doctors, encouraging our doctors who have come back with their first degree as general practitioners to go off again and to specialize. And I'm very happy, and I believe I can mention her on air, Dr. Kentisha Daly from Bath Village has already gone back to Cuba to specialize in surgery. We encourage our young doctors to do the same and are prepared to support them in terms of going off and engaging in specializations that the country needs. Let me move on and talk about electricity. In electricity, we are accustomed to power outages from time to time, sometimes at the most inconvenient times. I asked somebody metaphorically the other day about power and suggested to them how much power we now had on the island. And if you ask yourself the question, how or when was the last time you had some power outage? 
If there's a power outage now, it tends to be a planned outage when you're given notice, or it tends to be something that goes wrong, such as an accident knocking out a pole or something of that nature. We have done a remarkable job at Nevlik, and I want to salute the management, board management and staff at Nevlik, because this government has seen the need to invest. And over the course of this term, we have acquired two Wattsilla generators, which has put us in a position now where with the other generators that also were acquired by the CCM to have now a far more reliable supply of electricity. The problem that we used to experience is because there was no investment in generators over the years. In fact, one has to go back to the days of Dr. Simeon Daniels in RP to have and find an investment in generators for the electricity company. It is only the Honorable Van Samery as the venerable and revered leader of this party, and then myself when I became the leader, that has seen the urgent and pressing need to invest in Nevlik. Nevlik now is a shining example of a utility that has been well run, well managed. And yes, we have had difficulties because of the high price and high cost of fuel on the world market, but we have listened to people. And when our people cried out for the fuel surcharge, the government listened, the government consulted, and the government came up with a plan that would remove the fuel surcharge from households and cap it at 65 cents for businesses. Because what was happening before is that households were paying the fuel surcharge and businesses were paying the fuel surcharge. And we all know that businesses pass on their costs to their consumers. So it means that when Rams paid a fuel surcharge, Rams would have passed on that cost to the persons who were shopping at Rams. And so that single mother who went to Rams to buy was paying a higher price in terms of goods, but also going home and paying a higher price at home. So we provided some relief. And I will tell you, it has been, for me, one of the most pleasing episodes in my public life. When people have written to me, people have seen me on the street. One lady saw me at a restaurant. She came up and she hugged me and she said, thank you. And I couldn't understand what she was talking about. And she said that her electricity bill is the lowest that it has ever been. And I said, praise be to God that we were able to find a solution to bring some relief to our people. That is what a good government does. It listens, it consults, it considers, and it comes up with solutions. And that is a shining example of what we were able to do as a government to help our people. Our electricity supply is much better. We have not stopped there, however. We are improving throughout the island the infrastructure building in redundancy, ensuring that we no longer go blackout on the island when there's a problem in one area. We have been slowly changing out, changing out all of the old bulbs and changing them to LED bulbs, which are far more efficient, conserve power, and far more environmentally friendly. We are seeking to light areas that were not hitherto lit in terms of street lighting. And we have rolled out that initiative and it continues to be rolled out all across the island of Nevis. We have not stopped there. Nevlik is now spearheading the effort on geothermal energy. Renewable energy has to be the future of this island. And we have talked about renewable energy for a long time. The CCM started the geothermal journey in 2004. In 2006, the government changed. The NRP continued that journey with a company called West Indies Power. When West Indies Power turned out that they could not deliver, the same NRP took them to court to get out of the contract. And when we got back into office in 2013, the first thing we had to do was to fight that court case with West Indies Power. We won the case, and we then entered into an RFP, Request for Proposals. We had some consultants from the U.S. government, and we selected a company. That company, we thought, based on all the advice we took from the consultants, had the capacity to deliver. They did not. And so, again, the island was denied the opportunity for geothermal. 
But we didn't stop. We went back at it. We said, well, what else could be done? And the CDB stepped in. And we have been engaged with the Caribbean Development Bank and their funding partners on this very important project. On the 9th, on the 9th of December, the CDB, we are told, will have its final board meeting for this year. And we are also told that this particular project will be before them for consideration. I am hopeful that they will see the wisdom in supporting this project on the island of Nevis and allowing us, finally, to harness the power of geothermal energy. I want to go on record because every time I talk about geothermal, I want it to be known that our new Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, within two weeks of being in office, sent the necessary correspondence to the CDB, authorizing them to engage with us so that this project could proceed. And I say thank you to him because he shares the vision of seeing St. and Nevis powered entirely by renewable energy. What will geothermal do? We'll have drilling of five wells, three production wells and two reinjection wells. The young men in Hamilton, whom we have been meeting with and talking to, they now understand that they will have food right in their neighborhood for them to eat. An opportunity for them to get new jobs, new skills in the geothermal industry. We're going to need people during the drilling phase. We're going to need people during the construction phase. And then we're going to need people in terms of plant management and workers at the plant. A whole new industry is going to be created. But we're not stopping there. We are told now that we can store energy in hydrogen. And that there is a global demand for hydrogen. So we can export potentially hydrogen. We are told that a byproduct is ammonia. And we can either export ammonia or use ammonia to create a fertilizer industry here on the island. We are talking about retooling our entire transportation system, allowing us to have electric cars, electric scooters, and cleaner transportation. I mentioned already jobs that we hope to create. But more than that, we are hopeful that based on the pricing that we have already started to negotiate, that that pricing will come in at around nine cents per kilowatt hour. This is US cents that we're talking about. Now, I want you to consider that currently, diesel generated electricity is costing us in excess of 40 US cents per kilowatt hour when we include the fuel surcharge. And so, we are talking about a considerable reduction in price in terms of energy. We have already done the interconnectivity studies with our sister St. Kitts. And we now know that we can supply St. Kitts with geothermal energy as well. And so what we have here is a national resource, an ability to transform the entire landscape of St. Kitts and Nevis. Just as we brought the movie industry to Nevis, and it has now expanded its range so that our brothers and sisters in St. Kitts can also benefit. So too, we feel that geothermal can be transformative for the entire country. That is vision at work. And we look forward very much to an update from the CDB once they've had their governors, the Board of Governors meeting. We talk about water. The Honorable Spencer Brand has been absolutely marvelous. He has generated over 3 million imperial gallons worth of storage on this island. Brand new tanks all across the island. In infrastructure, wherever we have done road infrastructure, we have also upgraded our water distribution infrastructure. Sometimes people complain, they say the road are taking a bit long. But the answer is we are using that time to also do the water works to alleviate low pressure and those kinds of problems that some people used to have. A lot of people, when they put on the shower, sometimes the water is not coming out forcefully. That is now a thing of the past in most areas in Nevis as we upgrade in the villages and on the mains our infrastructure. We have built massive storage tanks all across the island. And in fact, we are now doing a new tank in the Pond Hill area. Spencer Brand came to the cabinet. Spencer Brand said to us, there's a well in Hamilton, which is a high-producing well. But we couldn't use the water 
because the water had too much manganese in it and therefore was unhealthy for human consumption. We said, Spencer, what do you propose? Spencer said, I propose that we get a water filtration system and we treat that water to make it portable, to bring it to WHO standards and put it into the system. We agreed, we saw some funding, and we put in place a filtration system at Hamilton, which has resulted in over 200,000 gallons of additional water per day going into the system. Spencer has not stopped there. Look around Charlestown, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the area there from the credit union, the area there around the Methodist Church, come around there by the Maud Cross Preparatory School, going all along to Jew Street, Happy Hill. Look at Craddock Road. People complain, say we made the big rock smaller. But that was the price of progress because the big rock had become a difficulty in terms of the safety of traffic. But we did Craddock Road. We then did the road from Big Rock to connect back to the island main road, there by the gas station at Pinnis. Look at Government Road and the work that was done there. That's all in Charleston, you know. And then when the people of Charleston said they wanted housing, Spencer Brennan came back to the cabinet. He said, listen, the government owns no land in town. But I want the government, the cabinet, to agree that we will buy land in Hamilton and we will buy land at the top of Craddock Road to do housing for our people. And because of his agitation, we went ahead and we purchased those lands. And I see young people now having a chance to own a home either in Hamilton or in Craddock Road, through his initiative and through his insistence that he wants to develop his beloved parish of St. Paul's. Spencer didn't just stop there because as minister with responsibility for infrastructure, he has had to spread out across the island. So look at Brown Hill Road. Look at the ongoing works now in Bath. Look at Butler's. Look now at the island main road and the work that is being done we've already done the bit from cotton ground to clifton cliff dwellers i'm sorry we're now moving from cliff dwellers all the way over to the newcastle area i drove today on catalong path and it looks like they're almost ready for paving on catalong path progress in front of our eyes progress that we can see at the garage, a new gas station up there to allow us to more safely provide fuel to government vehicles and, more importantly, to account in a more significant way for that fuel. A new area for the mechanics to work, to do their welding and their body works, as the case may be. All of that has been done under the leadership of the Honorable Spencer Brand and his team. We look at education and we see the brand new Tibet Center in Gingerland. Plans to build a second one in Charlestown. But for now, let us focus on the one in Gingerland. Vocational education, we have determined, has to be the way of the future. There are many people here who are skilled. They say they're masons, they're carpenters, they could build a house for you. Plumbers, electricians but they do not have a piece of paper that certifies that they are an electrician. Why? Because many of them learned it through a process of apprenticeship. They went as the old people used to say to learn a trade. And they learned the trade, but they never had the ability to get that piece of paper. We want to change that. And we want to also say to our young people in school, who are not interested in the French and Spanish, that listen, if your interest is cosmetology, if your interest is auto mechanic, if your interest is plumbing, then there has to be an avenue where you can do what interests you and come out of school certified in the trades. And so we are proposing a system where those who are already working can come 
and get their certification and those students who are interested can also get their certification a brand new dawn in education on the island of Nevis school buses we have now increased our fleet of practically brand new school buses to I believe it's about six or seven we have partnered with the Winsong Foundation and we have now had these school buses delivered incrementally I think in twos to the point now where we have either six or seven providing a safe clean and reliable transportation for our children going to and from school we have upgraded the infrastructure of our schools particularly during COVID when we had to go in and do upgrades to make them COVID proof I tip my hat to the Honorable Troy Leibert and the entire team in education because the job there was not easy and I know what they had to endure and what our teachers had to endure in order to ensure that our children were kept in an environment where they can learn all during the pandemic ladies and gentlemen I have used some time to just give a snapshot I can't leave however without mentioning crime because crime as we know is a social problem and it requires social intervention it requires all of us to intervene and whilst we have not yet stamped out crime in its entirety and I don't know that any country in the world has no crime as I like to tell people when we only had the Garden of Eden we had crime with Cain and Abel and so the truth is that crime is that type of phenomenon because man by his nature is flawed and flawed people will always engage in behavior that is unhelpful but on the issue of crime I am so pleased that working with the federal government we have been able to reduce the worst form of crime which is violent crime that's no comfort of course to those who have suffered from violent crime and I know that there are many families out there who have suffered and will continue to suffer as a result of loved ones either being involved in violent crime and now are incarcerated or who have paid the ultimate price but our statistics are showing that violent crime is down dramatically across the Federation and in the island of Nevis in fact virtually all categories of violent crime are down we have invested in CCTV technology we have inaugurated a brand new CCTV command center in the heart of Charleston and when I tell you it is state of the art accept for me that it is state of the art policing that we have introduced here in relation to our CCTV so I've talked about water I've talked about electricity I've talked about education I've talked about health care I've talked about agriculture I've talked about jobs and the economy we ladies and gentlemen have not rested we have worked and we have moved now beyond saying this is our record to saying now these are our plans and that is why we are so proud to release that manifesto we want to do that South Coast Road to open up the South Coast of Nevis for development I've dubbed that our Southeast Peninsula 2.0 because we recognize this Kennedy Simmons Highway in Sink it's opened up the Southeast Peninsula for development we want to do the same because when you leave Long Point all the way around the Gingerland there's no development no infrastructure we want to change that we have laid out our plans for our airport expansion laid out our plans for a seaport including the construction of a cruise pier there at Long Point we have laid out our plans for a new community college and to finally separate our sixth form from CSS our plans for vocational training using our TVET centers our plans on renewable energy as we finally realize the promise of geothermal our plans to create a coding academy so that our youngsters can learn to code and coding maybe beyond somebody of my age but these youngsters were using apps and developing uh, algorithms this is what they need that skill set as we transform the economic landscape of Nevis 
We have said in our manifesto that we now want to introduce term limits for the Premier. Two terms. And then it's bye-bye. Somebody else should be able to step up to the plate. We want to increase the number of seats in Nevis to seven, a plan that we had before that was put on hold because of COVID. Why? Because the rigors of government now are far more than they were in 1983 when we became independent. We want to see five federal seats on Nevis. And we'll be speaking to the government in St. Kitts about expanding that. Ten in St. Kitts, five in Nevis. Fifteen seats. Again, the demands of modern government suggests that we need more people, a broader range of talent in government. We, ladies and gentlemen, have set out our ideas. We have put them in writing. We ask you to consider them and help us to refine them because sometimes your ideas can help to refine what we have. Case in point, in engaging with some residents in Hamilton, a young mother said to me that there's a crippling cost of childcare. And for single mothers or low-income parents, childcare costs can wipe out most of their monthly income. And when I asked her how much, because my children are grown now, I have not had occasion to engage with childcare in a very long time. So I said to her, well, how much? She said for two children, she's paying as much as $800 per month. Now reflect with me. That if your salary is only say eighteen hundred or two thousand dollars a month, and you have to pay eight hundred dollars for two children, what that does to your ability to feed yourself and to advance yourself. And that single mother said to me, "Can the government help?" And I went back and I spoke to the team, and we have now decided that we will commit to at least one government-run childcare center in the next term. To allow some alleviation for single mothers, for low income bracket parents who need that assistance. And that's why I say listening to our people. We hear the real concerns that they have and we are able to respond. And so ladies and gentlemen, I have said much. I'm going to stop there for now because we have Miss Latoya Jones, our candidate for Nevis 5. She has produced a statement asking for your support and she has asked me to play the statement this evening so that the people of St. Thomas's and the people of Nevis can hear her passionate plea. And so it's queued up and we now play a statement from Latoya Jones. My fellow residents of St. Thomas's Nevis we are moments away from election day on Monday 12th December. The time has come to put party affiliations aside. The destiny of St. Thomas's is in the cradle of your hands. This is no longer about NRP and CCM. It is about you. Only you can determine the type of future that you wish to have. As you prepare to make your decision, Remember that you will not only be electing a government, but also defining the future of your children. The one question you should ask is, who is the better candidate to help you realize the dreams of your family? My fellow residents of St. Thomas's, Latoya Bianca Jones is that candidate. Yes, I am. I am that candidate who can help you find jobs, fix your roads, and transform our small businesses. Think about it. Who has been the candidate helping everyone, such as mothers, fathers, the young, and the elderly in St. Thomas's? Who is the candidate that you have been reaching out to for assistance? I have been that person. In response, I have been helping both NRP and CCM supporters, not just in St. Thomas's, but the entire island of Nevis. Given my academic qualifications, my outstanding service to the community, my professional work experience, and my proven record as someone who gets things done, I am by far 
the better candidate to serve you. I am a hard worker. When I set my mind to a task, nothing stops me. I have not been an elected representative, but look at how much I have gotten done. I have organized ceremonies to honor the heroes and sheroes of St. Pharmacies. I have done the same for mothers and young entrepreneurs. Through personal financial contributions and sponsors, I donated kites at Easter to our children, organized a Youth Excellence Award, and delivered food packages to our seniors. I also hosted a Mother's Day luncheon and delivered Valentine's Day gifts to young mothers and young fathers. My alma mater, the St. Thomas's Primary School, also benefited. For over two years, I've been sponsoring two students for lunch every single day, while still donating school supplies and other essential items. Painting of the school has also been a gesture of my love. I want to do more, but to do more, I have to be placed in a better position to do so. Vote for me to help me get a seat at that male-dominated cabinet table to demand more for the people of St. Thomas's. I will advocate for fisher folks, our farmers, the small business owners, the young mothers, the elderly, and the unemployed. As a woman myself, I make no apology in saying that women and the youth, in particular, will get my special attention, while still looking out for our men who also need our support. Creating jobs and business opportunities will also be my central focus. There is so much you can do when you have a job. You can pay your utility bills, send your children to school, and put food on the family table. I cannot do this on my own. I need your help. Go early on election day and vote for me. Encourage your friends and the rest of your family to vote for LBJ. I invite all newly registered voters and those who did not vote in 2020 and 2022 to support me. You now have Latoya Bianca Jones as a great choice on the ballot. Even if you may not favor one party over the other, I ask you to favor me on Monday 12th December. I am the only candidate in the history of St. Thomas's to ever produce a comprehensive plan for the development of the constituency. Read my plan and judge me on my vision. As a woman running in this arena of politics, it has been a tough road. However, I have remained calm and focused. I have endured. My strength and faith in God have protected me. In Him, I have placed all my troubles and He has provided the comfort needed. I pray for a peaceful election. I pray for my opponent and wish her the very best in her personal life. I hold no animosity. I hold no grudge and I harbor no hate. We are all God's children. My fellow residents of St. Thomas's, politics must be about the people. Politics must be about ideas, plans, and a vision. Politics must be about creating a brighter future for all, and it must also be about love. Vote for me, Latoya Bianca Jones, on election day. Let's make it all the way with LBJ. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. A very personal, very emotional, a very genuine appeal from Miss Latoya Bianca Jones asking for the support of the people of St. Thomas's. And this is more remarkable because, as I said, she is going through a personal health challenge at the moment, but she is not abandoning her quest to serve the people 
of St. Thomas's. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot has been happening. We are nearly up to the hour of 9 o'clock. As I said, I'm hopeful that people are listening, but I do know that there's a massive uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony going on in Charlestown, and I expect that most people will have their focus there. But nevertheless, this program is rebroadcast on Vaughan Radio at 1 p.m. tomorrow, and you have the opportunity to view it online at Facebook or on YouTube. Now, we've had some fun on the campaign trail thus far, and I have said repeatedly that one thing about me is when I go on the campaign trail and when I engage with people, I speak the truth. Some may not like it. It is sometimes a difficult truth, but I speak the truth. And I said to our people that my opponent in the last election, that of August 5th, 2022, Dr. Patricia Bartlett, my dear cousin, that she would vote for me because she's accustomed to voting for me. And I believe that in this coming election, she will vote for me again. She was the one who championed this story about it being impossible to do two jobs. She used some very elegant language, immoral, impossible, humanly impossible, repugnant even for any one person to vie for a federal position and also for the NIA. And yet, my dear cousin has vied for the federal in 2022, August 5th, and her name is on the ballot and she's been nominated to contest the election at the local level on December 12th. In some quarters, they would call that hypocrisy. But I'm not getting into that because that speaks for itself. I have been saying that she understands deep down in her heart of hearts that she has good representation in Mark Brentley. That is why over the years she has voted for me. I see Henzi Daniel now going around, bobbing his head as he does, knocking on doors and saying, vote for Pat, I you vote for Pat. But there's so many occasions when she has advised me and helped me in ensuring that Hensley was defeated for the NRP. Pat is no NRP. We know that. Pat is a disgruntled CCM. And so she has gone out there, but I think when push comes to shove, and when you go into that ballot box, that ballot area where you cast your ballot, when you go behind that curtain, it's only you and God. And I think that when it's only her and God, she will do the right thing for the people of St. John's and the people of Nevis. And I was saying it all along and people thought I was joking. In fact, some people were laughing when I said it. And then Pat went to sink it's because I keep going to sink it's on the radio over there. And Pat said something that I'm going to share with you tonight. We've actually created an ad that I want you to listen to tonight. This is Patricia Bartlett, NRP's candidate for St. John's, Nevis number two for the upcoming Nevis Island administration election. Even Ms. Bartlett knows who is the best representative for St. John's, Nevis number two. The Concerned Citizens Movement leader, Mark A.G. Bradley. And we have gained the confidence, mind you, of some people. Because I know, and I can share this with you and the audience, I voted for in the last election. If NRP's candidate has voted for Mark A.G. Bradley, why shouldn't you? This announcement was paid for by the Concerned Citizens Movement, CCM. I believe um, I'm going to ask my erstwhile assistant here to find that clip again. I think it's an important clip, you know, because it, it just puts into sharp focus the farcical nature of the NRP. Here you have NRP running around. Telling the world how bad Mark Brantley is, how terrible he is. Oh, I'm the wickedest human being that God has ever created. Why? In most cases, simply because they could not get what they wanted. In other cases, because they were in government and we uprooted them from government and said to the people that there was a better way. There's a level of bitterness a venom within the NRP 
that is indescribable. I don't think it has any place in public life because at the end of the day, we must accept that not everyone will support the same party. But here it is preaching that Mark Grantley is this wor he's the worst kind of human being because their elections and their propaganda ever since I entered elections, I entered politics as a young man has been an anti-Mark agenda. Young person asked me the other day, is NRP running an election about Nevis or are they running an election about Mark? And it made me step back and think. Because everything is Mark, 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 Mark. And here is my opponent. In her own voice, this is not doctored or manufactured in any way. And I want you to listen to it again because it's important. This is Patricia Bartlett, NRP's candidate for St. John's, Nevis number two for the upcoming Nevis Island administration election. Even Ms. Bartlett knows who is the best representative for St. John's, Nevis number two, the Concerned Citizens Movement leader, Mark A.G. Bradley. And he has gained the confidence in my room of some people because I know, and I can share this with you and the audience, I voted for him the last election. If NRP's candidate has voted for Mark A.G. Bradley, why shouldn't you? This announcement was paid for by the Concerned Citizens Movement, CCM. Ladies and gentlemen, enough said. I believe that speaks for itself. And that is what we are dealing with here. A lack of seriousness. Now, it is four minutes past the hour of nine o'clock. I'm going to open the lines in the event that there are people out there who would like to call in. I am invited the candidates if they are available because I know some are busy in town at the Christmas tree lighting that they can call in as well and to just say a few words the last on the mark show before the election the members of the party who are out there in fact members of the public generally give us a sense of how you feel have you seen our ideas heard our ideas what you're looking forward to in terms of Monday I really want our people to come out in their numbers and ensure that we keep Nevis on the right path. Let's go to the phones and take some calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening, Mark. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. Carlton DuPont. My brother, so good to hear your voice. In I'm fact, staying on the in, back, I'm in staying fact, on the back foot, but I'm following everything. Well, listen, I don't have a voice now. Before you say anything further, I want you to know, I sent a message to you. Because yes. I was in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And a lady who was at the restaurant, the lady who was serving at the restaurant, when she found out that we were from St. Nevis, she said, I am in love with a gentleman on radio whom I've never met. And when we asked her who she meant, she said, Carlton Duport. I picked up my phone and called you. And she waited ex expectantly because she wanted to talk to you to say hello and you didn't answer the phone so <laughs> I sent that message to you I apologize to her I said he must be busy but she said if there's one fan she woke up every morning she said at five to listen faithfully to you in the US Virgin Islands so I thought I'd share that with you oh I want to thank you yes but but Mark mm -hmm. listen to me something that impressed me about you truthfulness the Bible say in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3, Do not let loyal love and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. One of the reasons why I continue to follow you in politics, because from the time I learned about you, you have always impressed me. One, the encouragement that you have given to young people in Nevis to save something when they work. Mark, you know why that means a lot to me? I have grown tremendously over the past 40 years in business because I had the desire and the determination not to depend on others, but to work hard and save money. That is why today, thank God, I am a successful businessman and moving on. Two, one of the things that impressed me about you is the truthfulness that you spoke about tonight. I see you as one of the greatest politicians ever in this country, and I will continue to follow you. The next thing impressed me about you is that 
you don't have to be in politics. You could afford to live away from politics. I've learned that about you. I've been doing some serious investigation. You're brilliant. You're a bright man. You, you, you don't need politics to survive, yet you stay on in politics. Why, why do I think you're doing that? Because of your love for your little country. I once heard you say that you could have been in London or some other place in the world working, and you have chosen Nevis over that. Thank you. Now let's move on. I have not spoken anything on radio since election 5th. I want to congratulate Dr. John the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party for winning the election. And I also want to say thanks to you for coordinating with the new Prime Minister to get things done for Nevision. And I want to say to the entire population in Nevis that are going to be voting, if, I want to remind them of a little secret, if Nevisions had a problem with CCM, they would have shown that in August 5th. If they didn't do it in August 5th, they wouldn't do it on the 12th of this month. Congratulations to you all. And keep working. Mark, I am absolutely happy with you as a human being for showing your maturity and sitting down from time to time with Brother Jew. Young man, I, I've never met him. I'm looking forward one of these days. Hopefully I'll get a chance to meet him. But I'm asking the country, St. Kitts and Nevis, to pray for him that he will do a good job and bring the real thing that has cost me millions of dollars propelling in this country for 40 years. I have not been able to get it done, but at least I've started something. Dr. Drew make me feel good. It seems to me like Dr. Drew is bringing a new feeling of love and joy to this country. And when people say to me, Mark Brantley said, DuPont Mark Brantley said last night, Dr. Drew signing and helping Nevis with a lot of the things that couldn't have been done, especially geothermal. I say, you crazy or what? They say, no. But you see, I'm not listening. I, I'm, I'm in the store every day and people will say things to me and I will pick up. But let me say something quickly, Mark, for one, give other people a chance. You see that guy in St. Kitts, they call Patches Liber, that, that former minister of government that have grown sour. I want to choose my words carefully about him. I thought he was a better person. He is trying to bring you down. But the righteous will never falter. Because I believe that you are a man who believes in God. And Patches would not be with any program. No matter what program he continued to do, he would not be able to dethrone Mark Brantley. Mark, my advice to you is to work hard and continue to show Nevis young people, regardless of which party you're on. When election is over, you must be able to work towards the common good of the normal people. I want to see Nevis people be productive. Mark, I want to see more people in Nevis come down here and open business. I'll support them. I'll speak well about them. I'll put a loudspeaker on the bus. Go around the country and promote the business. I love the visions. You all bring a firmness to the Federation. Look at you the other day. A failed Prime Minister. Don't call the name. You try to sit down and work with him. That things could be better for all of us. But he wanted power. And so he moved away from common sense and understanding. Look at you and the relationship between you and Dr. Drew make me feel so good that I pray for you all. I also want to pray for the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. They did a very good job in the election. I, I, I don't be angry with party when election done, you know. I pick up myself and support them if they're doing good. Mark, I had a lot more things to say, but let me tell you something. When it comes to radio, I don't take up a lot of time because I think about others. I am going to wish you all well on Monday, and I'll be in Nevis on Monday observing as usual if God spare my life. And before Monday too, congratulations to you all again for the hard work. And the last thing I want to say before I leave, to anybody in St. Kitts,
who say that nothing happening in Nevis. Let me know when you want to go to Nevis. I'll pay the boat fee and I'll pay drivers to take you around and I'll be there driving my own vehicle. Anytime you petitions believe that nothing happening in Nevis, you can call me tonight. My number is 661-0037. I'll take you to Nevis and I'll give you a tour on my own. Mark, good luck to you and your party. And thank you for your maturity in election. I had a lot of things to say, but God tell me, go down this road. Congratulations to you again for your hard work in assisting the visions, and I wish your party well. And I will be staying up all night, Monday night, to listen to the count. Take care of yourself, Mark. Thank you for telling me what the ladies say in the Virgin Islands. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you, brother. And I thank you for your kind words. Uh, you mentioned some people like uh, Mr. Patches. I believe that my off-quoted statement of ignore the noise is important because Patches has been fired from every single job that he has ever held. And that speaks volumes. He had a slogan, you know me and I know you. And if he knew what he was saying, he should simply have reduced the slogan to I know you. Because it's because people know him why he keeps getting fired. So I leave patches at the foot of the cross because some people are already, already past the departure lounge. They are already out on the tarmac about to get on the plane and they're still fighting. I don't know what they're fighting for. I am praying and hoping if God blesses me with long life, that by the time I get to that age, I am having some enjoyment i'm having some relaxation with my wife and my family and trying to to get my heart right and get my my soul right and be ready to meet my maker not this bunch of old fellows making a lot of noise up and down the place what they're fighting for the people have spoken and the people have spoken most eloquently so my view is let me just leave that alone if they want to spend time talking about me, then that's a matter for them. One thing I know, that the old people in Nevis say, nobody stole empty mango tree. So only when you see that people feel threatened or they feel that you have some substance, that is the only time they come at you. There's mango in the tree. That's why you're throwing stones. I am not throwing any stones because no mango in their tree. Their tree don't have leaves or branches. Barren. And the people have found them to be so and have rejected them. And so that is where we will leave that. It is quarter past the hour. We are taking your calls. Good evening. You're on the mark. We've lost that caller. Let's try again. Caller, good evening. You're on the mark. Caller. Hello. Hello. Good night. Yes, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead. How are you, the Honorable? I'm okay. Thank you. I would not, my heart would not rest. And I'm not calling tonight. And the uh, congratulations in advance to the system when when Monday comes, because one knows that there is no secret that I have great admiration for the work that you have been doing in music and the things you could do in music. Um, um, I heard Mr. Dupont earlier, on, and we know that there is a lot of noise down this part of the world. Same thing with where people are saying nothing is happening in Nevis. But I am not blind because when I do come to Nevis, I see the level of work. Um, I've had the privilege of being over to Indian Castle, the farm, and I was really, really impressed with what, I, what I've seen there. But I want to make a point where I had a discussion with somebody the other day, and the person was saying to me, um, Why, oh, Mark, man, you should never become. Premier of Nevis again because he has never done nothing for Nevis. So I said to the person, I want to ask you, when did um, Mark Bradley became Premier of Nevis? The person paused. I said, well, let me tell you. That was in December 2017. By within two years of becoming Premier, we had the COVID pandemic. Nevis was set to take off. Nevis was on a trajectory of growth. And as you are the only premier which has faced a, the first the first in a hundred years in a century to have faced the worst economic situation in any country any leader has ever faced and you have come out showing great determination and you have come out showing your love and strength 
with the division people. And that I must commend you for. So. Today, I want to also um, say how thrilled I am that we now have a young lady in Natalia, Bianca Jones. Every time I hear her, she reminds me of a politician in Jamaica by the name of Portia Wilson Miller. And if anyone knows the history of Portia, Portia came into politics almost at the same age as Latoya Bianca Jones. And I really am looking forward to the people of St. Thomas um, making that speech and doing the right thing because I believe that this young lady, this honorable young lady, will do very well for the people of St. Thomas. I've spoken to some people over there that I know, and uh, these people are particularly um, aligned to the NAPI, and their talk of her is just quite um, not what many people think. They really have um, a good view of her, they believe that she has been in the community, and that is something that I'm really looking forward to. But before I go, I want to urge my fellow um, community members um, from the non-national community that are living in need, that this time you need to let your voice be heard because we understand the present realities. We have seen how the system government has treated you. We have seen in particularly how NRP has treated you historically. And you now have a choice to, to ensure that the good treatment coming from the system government, the reduction in, in um, fees for your for the work permit, with um, access to certain benefits that were never given to you in, in the past. That you now use your head and vote the right way. And so I just want to encourage you, um, the Honorable Premier, um, all the best on December the 12th. And you have a record that, with all the money that is making, the record is here to show. And so I encourage you and the fellow candidates within the system. Um, to have a good election, and I expect that when the ballots are counted, all four that are currently in the column, plus the new ones in St. Thomas, will be in that column. So all the best, uh, my friend and brother, and may God bless you. Thank you very, very much. I didn't interrupt you because I really wanted you to speak as elegantly and as eloquently as you have done. In fact, there is the issue of the non-national community. And uh, I believe that, again, this NRP is seeking to expunge the horrible track record that they've had in so many aspects. But let me take a moment to talk about the non-nationals. Because the NRP targeted non-nationals for deportation. I remind people that when we got into office in 2013, there were non-nationals who had been deported for no reason other than the perception was that they supported CCM. And not only did NRP deport them, they used their then relationship with the federal government to get notations put in the national security database that these people could not re-enter the country. These people were declared persona non grata. That is a designation that is reserved for the worst type of terrorists and criminal. Mothers, one gentleman spoke to me, said his girlfriend who had lived here with him for some time had been removed forcibly to back to Guyana. And when she sought to book a ticket to come, that is when she was alerted that there was this notation in the system that she could never again re-enter St. Kitts and Nevis. These are our Caricom brothers and sisters. And some of the people perpetrating this evil on the non-national community themselves have relatives living in distant lands. And I wonder how they felt sitting around the table making these kinds of policy decisions to go after people. And I said that I could not support that type of approach. And we have adopted a different approach where with the non-national community we have said, listen, regularize yourself. Bring yourself within the law. Under my administration, we've granted not one, not two, but three amnesties. Allowed in our national community, our Guyanese brothers and sisters, our Jamaican brothers and sisters, our Dominicanos, those from Dominica, St. Vincent, wherever they're from, we've said regularize your status. 
make a contribution to our development just as we are in some of your lands making contributions to yours. If we can't embrace our own Caribbean brothers and sisters, then who are we going to embrace? A young lady told me that she was so embarrassed just two days ago. She said a woman saw her and approached and asked her to vote for the NRP. And she said to the woman that she was supportive of the CCM. And the woman said, oh, huh? that's why we need to get all of your foreigners out of here. Why? Why? Why not instead develop programs? Come to the people say, listen, we apologize for how we would have treated you in the past. And we now want to develop programs to work with you. To make things easier. And I want the non-national community to look at our manifesto. Because there's a section in our manifesto about non-nationals. Because we see people as people. Particularly Caribbean people. We are one people. We were dropped off in different islands. By those who enslaved us. But we are one people. And once people are prepared to be law abiding. And to make a contribution. Then we welcome them. And that has been the CCM position, and we will not resile from that position. We are not going to attack the non-national community like the NRP does. And so I'm happy that you raised that point, Carla. Let me go back to the phones and take some more calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Yes, good evening, Mr. Bentley. Good evening to you. Yes, I'm so happy to that I can sit back and listen to you about all the plans and programs that you already passed on. And Mr. Bentley, just want to say to you, my Bible tells me, no weapon that come against the people of God will prosper. And the people that will be voting on Monday and voting the right way, are still voting for the system and see that the things that are, you guys have been doing to continue in Nevis, make sure the infrastructure and the development continue to grow. I say God is going to give them the wisdom and the understanding to go out and make the right choice and elect in all five of you guys to go back into government to continue to look after the people of Nevis welfare. Because you see, when you, when you sit back and you look at it, can you imagine that you said something there? It, during the COVID, you asked the NRP to put out the olive branch, the same olive branch you're going to speak about, to, for them to work with you to help with the pandemic. They said, no. So then you're telling me, if you love Nevis people and you don't want to help in working during the pandemic to help the people so that life could restore it. And you're telling me they're coming now, they got the brass face to come now and tell the people of Nevis that they want to move to them. But I want to say to the people of Nevis, come with barn and bread in Jindalan, Rabbit Mountain. And I want to say to the people of Jindalan and the surrounding area of Nevis to go out and vote overwhelmingly for the Council of Citizens Movement. This is a party with vision, with foresight, and they are going to continue to do the things for the people of St. of Nevis and make sure that whatever we do, we also fall over to the people of St. Because you see, we are one. And that's why I hate the idea that we keep fighting against each other. We got to stick together because the Bible says, um, people that pray together stays together. Mm -hmm. When we divide, we're going we to cause problems. So I want to say to you tonight, I congratulate you and your team. You guys have been doing some wonderful meetings and I like the way you do it. You don't want to like a cost and, and, and try to bring them over. You say the things as it is and nothing could be true. Because when you speak truth, truth to power, you got to stand on the winning side. God bless you. Have a good one. And may God bless you that come Monday, you come out victorious. God bless you. Thank you very much. But I, again, I go back to the messaging that we're getting from the NRP and how confused it is. The NRP attacks anything and everything that they think is good. They have never looked at any development on this island and said, okay, that's a good idea. Everything they attack. In the height of COVID, I got on the phone with a man called Philip Martinez. He was in Barbados and I told him about my vision for film industry. And he decided to take a chance on Nevis and he moved an entire crew here in January of 2021. Mr. Martinez and his team, MSR Media, have been here since then. They have produced nine, nine movies since that time here on the island of Nevis. Now, the deal that we worked out with them 
is that the Nevis Island Administration contributes financially. But we said to them that our financial contribution will be limited to paying for accommodation for their staff and accommodation for the stars when they came. The stars stayed mostly at Four Seasons or in private villas, and the staff stayed at the Hamilton over there at the foot of Cotton Ground. That has been the arrangement in relation to MSR. And the NRP has attacked mercilessly. MSR now employs 95 people. And they're paying people as much as six and 700 US a week. And the NRP has been relentless in the attack. Again, the usual lies about how many millions, I think they say it's 15 million US dollars we've given MSR. Where are Nevis getting 15 million US dollars from to give anybody? And they have gone on and on and on about all of this that is being said. We have said that we have committed $150,000 to each film that is done here. And we have said that that amount of money is spent to pay for the accommodation. Now, why did we say the accommodation? I recognize that it's Nivisions working in the hotel, Nivisions working at the villas, Nivisions working at Hamilton. And the thing that bothers me is that when I look at who has benefited most from MSR, some of them who work in at MSR, those who are getting the money for the accommodation from MSR, those who are doing catering for MSR, all of them are diehard and happy. And you mean to tell me not one of them can stand up and say to their party, listen, this is good for Nevis. You all don't go out and attack the people and say all oh, nasty man of evil against them. Imagine they're saying MSR come here with $1,000, they say. $1,000. And it's the Nevis government giving them all these millions of dollars to help them to do what they're doing. Absolute rubbish. But the people who are benefiting the most from, N from, from MSR, not CCM people, you know. Because I have never once sat down with the leadership of MSR and tell them, don't hire that one, you must hire this one. No, no, no. I said to them, you're staying at Hamilton? Okay, the owner of Hamilton doesn't support us. But people work there. Who are these people, Nevis people? Who am I? The Premier of Nevis. You are getting your catering done by a rabid NRP? That's all right. I have never gone to them and said to them, this person or that person, you have people in your office who are rabid NRP, people who work for you are rabid NRP, that's all right. Employ who you want to employ, because that is not my business. If Nevisions are doing well in Nevis, I am the premier of all of Nevis, not some. And so that has been my posture. But the problem that I have, it's when the same NRP goes after companies such as these that are doing some good, that are employing people, that are generating income and revenue for the same NRP supporters. I wonder why it is these people are not saying to their leaders in NRP, listen man, this is wrong. This is wrong. You're boxing bread out of my mouth. When you're saying these things, if the CCM didn't bring them here, where would we get people to stay in my place? Who I would be catering to and making all this money? Who would be paying me this kind of salary? Stop it. And this is the part that I don't understand because the way the NRP is going on, if they were to win on Monday, it looks like MSR is gone. Well, if MSR is gone, well, I'm to the 95 people that work in there. We have a stop to consider sometimes what we are saying and what we are seeking to do. When Joseph Parry was Premier of Nevis, he went on the platform and he boasted that if Four Seasons don't pay some money by whatever time, he can shut them down. 
He going to shut them down. And when he ball out, he going to shut them down. One of my cousins who walked down there ball out in the crowd because she realized, well, if four seasons shut down, what after she? She gone home. Oh, she going to pay she bills. It is a tomfoolery. The abject acidity of the approach of the NRP to anything and everything because they don't come at it in a logical and sensible way thinking about people. No. Mark Brandley and CCM bring MSR here so we must attack MSR. Mark Brandley and CCM bring whoever here so we must attack them. That is the way they behave. I remember we have some Hong Kong investors who built bought some land and built a property over in St. James. Oh my goodness, the number of pictures they put up. They don't even know what the people are doing. All kind of pictures, all kind of speculation as to what the people are doing and who the people are. Creating hostility towards investors when they themselves are the ones benefiting. They're the ones benefiting. And I have never once sought to direct anybody. To go there or go here. And listen, you know why? I remember bringing some investors here when I practiced as a lawyer. They were going to do a development down at Pinnies. They had done the Viceroy in Anguilla. And they had come. They were called the Core Group. K-O-R. I chartered a flight from Anguilla to bring them to Nevis. Rented a room at Four Seasons to meet with the then government led by Joseph Perry. And the people came and were very interested in doing business in Nevis. And one day, one of them called me from the UK and asked me, what's going on in Nevis? I said, why? He said, he got a call and was told that now that we realize you're serious, you cannot do business with Mark Brantley and his law firm because we're not sitting around no table with he. So here I was trying to generate business and a hotel project for Nevis. The concern of the NRP was that I must not be the one to do any legal work because they're not going to do any business with me. I remember sitting at the departure lounge in New York and a lawyer from St. Kitts, whose name I won't mention, laughed at me. He said, I and Nevis people are something else. I said, why? He said, because you went out and you bring a whole Amman people here. You took them to see the site at Indian Castle. You introduced them to this whole idea of doing a hotel in Indian Castle. I said, yes, I did. He said, but they couldn't do no business with your firm. Then my time, I was still a lawyer practicing. So they end up in Sinkets with him because they were forbidden from doing business with me and I pledge I can't be like that if you really need vision and you love Nevis and you say that you're the leader of Nevis you can't be like that but at the same time I call on people who are benefiting from some of these policy initiatives that this government has taken good God if you won't defend the government that's okay but defend your money Defend your money, defend your business because it's your business that is going to suffer. If these people get up tomorrow and say we gone out of here because the environment is too hostile. Who suffers? You. And yet you up and down clapping and saying yes and happy, yes and happy. And I am saying that to my mind is illogical. We have 25 minutes left. Is there anybody on the line holding? Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hey, Mr. Bentley, I'm going to talk to you. Very serious questions I want to ask and I want to answer tonight. Uh, Hello, uh, you're, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Hey, may I ask you this question? Which political party and Nevis came to St. Kitts and caused St. Kitts to be known as Devil's Island? Which political party came to St. Kitts that we could not have had it? Parliament in St. Kitts, how much could be been over a year or more? Which political party and Nevis, when a bone stretch came to Nevis and the, 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 the 
that the government workers was not able to get the money. You understand the question I asked you? Yes. You understand it? They're now coming on thank it and begging us to support them. You understand what I'm speaking of? I'm if listening. Five hundred million dollars in seven years that could run the country. Send me one project from the CBA money came to me with. And and that they said you know, man car calling and say they went Taiwan with Dr. Joe. He was invited also the opposition leader. Let's answer them and tell them. When you're going to back on your campaign trail, let them know it. Good night. Calling from St. Kitts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello? Hello? Yes, you're on the mark. Go ahead. Good night, Mr. Brantley. Good night to you. Um, This is Mrs. Doar. I yes. would like to mm -hmm. know if you you did talk to them in 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 electric light department to come and give me the little light and the pole. I sent that message right away. If you're calling, that means they haven't come. Yeah, no, they haven't come okay. because um, there was up by a house up that they just built this for this week here, uh -huh. and they didn't they didn't pass. And let me give you the pole num the pole number that was out there. Just give it to me. P mm -hmm. P. Yes. Zero one one P P one zero one one P one zero one one. Yes. Okay. I will tell them yet again and see if I can get them to come there tomorrow. Okay. Yes. P one zero one one. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. I'm most grateful for that. Um, let me go back to the phones and take another call. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I am well, and it's good to hear your voice. Yes. I'm just trying to say, don't be afraid, because I know you and the ccm Love government have the vision to make SKN a better place. The lives of so many can and will be changed, because everything that's going to happen and everything that we would want and need would be outside of our comfort zone. Also, don't be afraid of what can go wrong. Just stay positive about what can go right. I know you all can do this. Have a pleasant night. Thank you very, very much. And we look forward to seeing you and to seeing so many others. And as I say, look forward to seeing. I saw something being circulated today, purportedly attributed to... Uh, one of the NRP candidates claiming they don't have any money and they can't bring home anybody to vote. And I, I smiled to myself. I said, you know, tricks are for kids. Because we know that the NRP has booked a ton load of people to come home. Why? Because we too are reaching out to our supporters to come home to exercise their franchise. And so we don't understand this hypocrisy and this effort to deceive. They keep talking about the overseas voters are the ones who are winning elections for CCM. But they found themselves in New York and they found themselves in the Virgin Islands campaigning. And inviting the same people to come home. In fact, one of them tell them don't buy no fridge for Christmas. Instead buy a ticket and come home to vote. And they have this sort of schizophrenic approach where they think they're fooling somebody. I don't know if they feel that if they say they don't have any money to bring home people to vote, that CCM is going to relax. No, <laughs> we're not a party that relaxes. We take elections seriously because we take representation of people seriously. This is not a game. And this approach that they're taking, when we fully well know, because one of them boasted and said they still have money left over from what they got from Sinkits in the last election. And they didn't get it from Labour. They didn't get it from PAM. So, whoever they get it from, they still have it. And so, I don't understand again the effort to mislead. Run your election. Bring your ideas. Bring home your voters. Get out your vote. That's what people do in an election. And again, stop the tomfoolery and the asininity. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello? Yeah, good evening. You're on the mark. Yes. All the way, I try to get in, I can't get in. 
You didn't know. Uh, yes, sir, I hear him say yes. that you really do not, I mean, it's possible that you do not know when need it, but I tell him that I'm not supposed to be able to do to know when need it. Mm. So, I hope God will help me to win because if it will be, it's possible to tell me, you know, why you win. Mm. So, me, you know, so just stick your finger across and tell me where I need to win hello for me and we'll take care. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your call. Let's stick with the phones. Good. <laughs> Okay, 869-469-1616 and 1700. Again, candidates, if you're out there, I know it has been difficult to get in, but if you can ring in and uh, let the people hear your voice, the world is listening. Let me go to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Good night. Good night to you. Yeah, good night, uh, Mark. I have had something bothering me for a long time. Every time I listen to I listen to your program all the time and... I realize when there's election coming up especially, um, the politicians go up to um, New York, they go up to England, they go to Canada, Virgin Island, all around, and ask the persons up there to hold in who are divisions to come home and uh, exercise their franchise because their neighbor's string is buried there and they pay um, taxes and so forth. Very good. I don't mind. Some of them live abroad 40 years and so my concern is the division who live next door in Sinkit. Now, I am a division. My neighbor spring is buried in Nevis. I pay taxes. But yet still, I cannot come over to Nevis to vote. I have to vote. I'm living in Sinkit, as I say. When I left school, I got a job in Sinkit. I was working in Sinkit. But I'm a division. My neighbor spring is fully up there. I think you all should look at the Constitution, whatever is necessary and make it possible for the vision to live in. Just next door, who know what is happening over there, who is listening, who is um, offering with all the, 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 the things that are happening, but yet still can go over to Nevis and vote. I must vote and think, I am not a gay teacher. I pay taxes, I am a division, my name is Springs, right over there. So, give me a little comment on that, please. All right, well, thank you for that. It's an interesting perspective. But the reason why uh, divisions living in Sinkits can't vote is because Sinkits and Nevis is still the same country. And uh, they are over in Sinkits, which means that they are required to register where they reside in the country. That's what the law requires. The regime for overseas voters is different. Overseas voters are allowed to register in the area that they lived in last before they left the country. Or alternatively, it was expanded, I think, under Dr. Douglas to say that they can register in the area where their mother or father lived because they started to register people who were never born here, who were not born here. And so the initial law said that you could register in the last place that you resided. So if you were to leave Nevis and move to Antigua, move to New York, move to London, you could register to vote here in Nevis at the last place that you resided prior to your leaving. But if you move to St. Kitts, you are still in within the country. You have not left the country, and so you're required to register where you live in the country. And so that is the distinction, and that is why if you're on St. Kitts, you're required to register there and not over here and vice versa. So I hope that's an explanation. It may not satisfy the inquiry because I think you're suggesting something deeper that you have a connection by birth with Nevis and therefore should be able to vote in Nevis. But that is the reason why you cannot, because you are required by law to register in the country where you live. And the regime for overseas voters is a different regime entirely. It is quarter to the hour. We're taking your calls. 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. On Monday, the 12th, we have an election on the island of Nevis. I am praying that people go out in their numbers and praying that we have a peaceful election, as we are accustomed to, and that you would have had a chance to listen to the ideas and to make a decision based on that ideas. Don't engage in any cussing with anybody. Don't engage in any row-row. If people are saying things that are vexatious to your spirit, simply walk away. Don't worry about that. The CCM is waging a campaign of hope, not one of hate. We are engaged in ideas, debate, substance, suggesting ways that we can lift our island. And that is why we are the only party that has put out a manifesto thus far. We have put out our ideas. We have been talking about them. We have now committed them to writing. 
For those who say nothing has happened, look at our manifesto. Drive around Nevis. Look at the water taxi pier. Look at the police station and fire station in Newcastle. Look at the treasury building in Charlestown. Look at the tender pier here in Charlestown. Look at the kitchen at JLPS. Look at the roads, farms, Butlers, Shaw's Road, Bath, Brown Hill, Handys Road, Braziers, and I could go on and on. For, for those who say nothing is happening, look around. Look at the Malcolm Gishard Park. An incredible investment in leisure here on the island of Nevis. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? Hello. Yes, you're on the mark. Go ahead. Good evening, brother. How are you? Good evening to you. I'm well. <laughs> this is Troy Livert. How are you? I'm good, man. It's been it's been very difficult getting into the show tonight. I've been calling since nine thirty. <laughs> well, you're in now. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to you know encourage the general public, of course, to go on out Monday and support the concerned citizens movement. I think you've done. A remarkable job as Premier uh, Mark, and I want to congratulate you for that. I sat and I listened to you tonight, and you have certainly laid out the achievements of um, this government over the past five years, and you have also included some things from the the previous um, five years. And, uh, you know, I just have to say that if people are serious about wanting to see Nevis moving forward, then they would realize that the concerned citizens' movement is the only way forward. We have an opposition, and they are out there now. They know that it's election, and they realize that it's probably the, the only opportunity to get into government for a long time, you know, and so they're out there in their numbers, and they're trying to come up with everything. We can see the desperation on their part, but we have to ensure that our people remain focus you know they're, they're putting all sorts of things out on facebook and we i i want to join you in saying what you would normally say that our people need to ignore the noise and stay focused continue to um you know look at all of the good things that have been happening of course our party will be continuing to carry that message to the people uh, we're going to be in gingerland tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. sharp, we're going to be at um, the intersection of Matchman's Day, just below the, the Gingerland Secondary School. So um, we encourage everybody to come on out to that meeting. And coincidentally, we're going to be right there next to that um, Tivet development that we just had, the Tivet um, Center. And of course, we're going to get to have a look at the new look entrance right there at the, the um, Gingerland secondary school and of course right next door to that we have the new gas station and we have a, a complex that is just being developed here so there's a lot of development in Nevis and then on Friday evening we're going to be in your area in Brown Hill and um, we're going back to our original meeting spot and that will be right here by Hyacinth shop um, you know, uh, that spot has been very good for us, and so we're going right back there. And that's where our CCM people feel at home. Then, of course, on Saturday night, we go over to Brooklyn, and we're going to be rallying with the Honorable Alexis Jeffers there in Brooklyn. And then on Sunday night, to um, finish off the campaign, we come back to the Caribbean Cove, and we're going to have a grand rally there at the Caribbean Cove on Sunday evening. And then, of course, on Monday, we want all of our people to come out in their numbers and to rally with the Concerned Citizens Movement and go out and place that vote for our five candidates. I think we are bringing the best team in these elections. And I am persuaded that the Concerned Citizens Movement is the only way forward for the people of New Thank you very much, the Honorable Troy Lieber. And let me say it has been an absolute pleasure working with you. I have seen you at work in two dispensations now under the leadership of the Honorable Van Samuel, blessed memory. 
and under my leadership, and uh, you have brought tremendous value and energy to the team. So thank you for that. You came in as a young man. You're not so young anymore. Um, many of us came in young and not so young anymore, but we now have the blend of experience and youth that I think we need to take Nevis forward. I like to say we're old enough to know, but still young enough to do. Still young enough to do. And so we welcome all, and I, I certainly look forward to that meeting tomorrow night. It's going to be an exceptional meeting in the heart of Gingerland. And then, as you say, we move to Brown Hill, and then to Brick Hill, and then we have the last rally on Sunday where we're inviting all of Nevis to come to Caribbean Cove. We're going to have entertainment. We're going to have the only kind of rally that CCM has where we get our people together and we energize our people as we go out and retake this government at the ballot box on Monday. So thank you for that, Troy Liber. You're welcome, brother. You have a good night. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is On The Mark. I'm your host, Mark Brantley. We're talking politics. We're talking elections because elections are happening on Monday. Monday. That is a mere few days away. We will have an election. We have launched our manifesto. It went live at 6 p.m. this evening. And we're asking you to look at it and to see not only what we've done, but what our plans for the next five years look like. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're On The Mark. Yeah, good night, Mr. Brandt. Good it's night to you. Call. You're in now. Go ahead. I know that the majority of Indonesians are satisfied with the wonderful work you and your government are, is doing. So ignore the noise, stick to the truth, and stay focused. We love you and are wishing all five of you success to win on this election day. God bless you. Thank you. And with God, all things are possible. Continue to stay focused, stick to the truth, and ignore the noise. Myself and family are proud of you. Thank you so much. Good I night to you, and God bless you, and I wish you all all the best. Okay? Thank you. Okay. I really appreciate it, and we look forward to your support and that of yes. your family. And good night to the young lady there who is sick. Yes. I, love to, I just love to hear that girl, eh? All right. Yes, I okay. love to hear her. Okay, good night, because time soon up. All right. <laughs> okay. Good night and All thank you. See you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is on the mark, and we are taking your calls. We are getting your perspective. We have about seven minutes or so left in the show this evening. It will be the last show before elections, and elections are slated for the twelfth of December, Monday, that day that the Lord would have made. We are asking for his grace and his mercy that he watches over us, that we may have a peaceful election, and that at the end of the day, the people's will will be heard. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Good evening, Mr. Brantley. Good evening to you. I'm calling out of Stacia. Welcome, my brother. Well, I pray that everything will go well, and the voters will really come out and go to the poll. Elections are only win one at the poll. And I hope they will go out and support the big blue machine. All the best and best wishes. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support and the love over the years and the calls from Stacia. You, kept, you have kept us connected, and so I thank you for that. We have five minutes left. We're taking your calls. Let's go back to the phones. No, we don't have anybody on the phone. Um, candidates, if you're still out there and you're not occupied, I know the Honorable Troy Libre said it was very difficult to get in, but I'm sure that the people would like to hear your voice even in this last few minutes. It is our last show before the election of December 12th. We have in Nevis one, St. Paul's, the Honorable Spencer Brand. They say he's the only brand in town. In number two, I offer myself humbly to the people of St. John's yet again as their representative. In number three, it's the Honorable Eric Evelyn in Gingerland. They say the people there are all in with Evelyn. In number four, St. James, it is Zook for sure in number four. And then in number five, we have a young woman in Latoya Jones and even the little children are saying it's all the way with LBJ. And so we have a campaign which is exciting which is based on ideas where we have tackled issues and not get into people's personal lives. We have not done that. Not that we don't have things we could say, but as we see on our campaign trail, 
Everybody knows the candidates for the NRP, so we don't need to say anything about them. And we've left it at that. We have not sought to go down that road because, as Ms. Jones herself put it, that can't create one job, can't help one single mother, can't build one house or fix one road. What can do that is passionate representation, loving people, representing people. And I'm the first tonight to say that we don't always get it right. Some people, when I talk to them, they like to point out the things that you have not got right. And I said, yes. But what about the things that we have done well? Because that is the nature of life. It's a balance. We are not perfect. We have not approached and done everything perfectly. But we have always been honest with the people of Nevis. You know, I hear the talk sometimes loosely thrown around about corruption. And I have prided myself as the Premier of Nevis that I have a team that is going into an election and there is not a single blemish on our team. Nobody can point a finger at Spencer Brand, at Eric Evelyn, at Alexis Jeffers, at Latoya Jones, or at myself to say that we've ever involved ourselves in any corrupt activity or corrupt dealings. Before God and man, we can say our hands and hearts are clean. How many can say that? And notwithstanding that, this government instituted an era of greater transparency. I hear other people talking about integrity in public life. We have now, this year, will make the fourth time that ministers in Nevis have to file their assets and liabilities with the Integrity Commission. We have passed legislation, operationalized it, put in place an Integrity Commission, given them their budget, they're independent, and we are filing what we need to file. CCM did that. We have ensure that we have regular press conferences. Another innovation that we introduced to ensure that the press, the fourth estate, has the opportunity to ask the questions they want to ask. We did that. Openness. And I think when you're open with people, I come here every Wednesday that I'm able. Premier of Nevis. Which other leader in the region has a show? We had the former Prime Minister in Sinkis used to go on radio when it was politically convenient. You hear him now? No. I have had a show here for over 15 years. Week in, week out. Month in, month out. Year in, year out. You know why? Because I'm committed to this conversation with the people of Nevis. That stick to itiveness is what you get when you're passionate about people and you're passionate about what you do. And so, as we come to the close of this very important show, I want to thank all of those who called. I want to thank all of those who have stayed with this great party all these years. For those who have shared the vision. And for those who want the best Nevis that we can have. This is not a Nevis for cussing. A Nevis for Roro and Nega business. This is a Nevis for progress. A Nevis that we look forward together to build. And on December 12th, I ask humbly... And respectfully for your support. In number one, St. Paul's, I ask you to support Spencer Brand. He has done well. He deserves that chance. In number three, I am asking you humbly to stay with Eric Evelyn. He's a man of the people and he continues to serve with distinction. In number four, I want you to stay with the hardest working minister in government, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. In number two, I offer myself again to the people of St. John's. You have been with me as I have been with you since August of 2007. And we have never forsaken each other. And then in number five, St. Thomas's, I want you to give Latoya Bianca Jones that opportunity. Reward this young woman with that opportunity to serve you. That's our show. Thank you. God bless you. And see you on Monday. Go out in your numbers and vote for the Concerned Citizens Movement. Thank you, good night, and God bless you.
views and opinions expressed on the preceding program were solely those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Nevis Broadcasting Company Limited or its advertisers.